the EP podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. Sit down here at the nine foot homemade oak bar. This is an annual thing now. She comes down, she visits me. I, I it's been great every year having Dr. Jenna Woodland. She is the superintendent of District 124. That is all of your grammar schools and central middle school sitting down here and talking with us. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me today. I like having you in every year because I know that people start gearing up for school, although I always feel like guilty bringing it up while it's still summer. Like I have two kids right now that are preparing to jump in the pool in the backyard. It's right at the top of my mind. Like it's summer for them. But you guys are full swing getting ready for the school year. Do you ever feel like cringy when you hit like the button to send the email out to all the parents like it's time to go back? Yeah, no, sometimes. Absolutely. But we definitely have parents reaching out about packet pickup and they're ready for the back to school bash as always. Yes. When is that? I'm coming to that. Uh, it is August 24th, okay. which is our first day of student attendance. So that's actually a half day of student attendance. And then the back to school bash will be that evening from 530 to 7 p.m. Okay, I remember from previous years there was a thing with foam. Is there is there foam this year? Of course there is foam. <laughs> it's always one of my favorite things. Um, but we definitely have some other events planned, and we're always looking for sponsors. And this also goes to great things for, to support our kids. We're planning for actually a coat drive with our students this upcoming fall into winter to support students who might need new coats things of that nature. So we're really looking to give back to our community. Actually, you mentioned sponsors. This episode of the EP Podcast and every episode that we do brought to you by the First National Bank of Evergreen Park. When you're setting the kids up for school, don't forget that one of the most important things is a student checking account from the First National Bank of Evergreen Park, a debit card of their own and unlimited free in-network ATMs, a very easy to use mobile banking app for teens and young adults this way, you can keep track of their money and send it to them whatever school they're at. Remember, the standard checking account, the statement savings, $300 bonus if you open up that checking account, $200 with the savings account, the ATMs, free wherever you go, and there's no overdraft charges. There's a reason why my company, my personal accounts, my kids' personal accounts are all in that iconic building at 95th and Pulaski. Get in there today. The First National Bank of Evergreen Park member FDIC. Ahead on this show, we will unveil the entire bracket for the Battle of Evergreen Park and the Smiley Tillman Band is hitting Evergreen Park this weekend. We're going to talk to the band before they get here. Dr. Jenna Woodland, the superintendent of District 124 down here now. I ask this every year, but I'm going to ask you for people that haven't heard it. Uh, you don't have to be a kid to go to Back to School Bash. It's a community event, right? And you're gonna there's going to be food out there, a little bit of music, some fun for the kids, things like that. Yes, anybody is welcome. In fact, we always have the mayor that comes. The Evergreen Park Police Department makes an appearance. Our fire department makes an appearance. It's just a great event for families to come out and collaborate with one another and just have a, a great time. That's great. And the EP podcast will be out there as well. If somebody wants to donate, be a part of, sponsor, whatever, how do they reach you? They can reach me directly via email at jwoodland at d124.org, or they can contact the D124 Foundation, which is also located on our website. All right, so now let's get into something that you were, you brought up to me that I find really interesting. You hired an architect. Yes. Like normally, I would think you're hiring teachers. You hired an architect. Why did you do that? Yeah, that's a great question. So absolutely, we're looking to support the facilities needs of our school district as always and just making sure that we're providing the most responsive education to our students which includes updating our facilities and i've had some parents really recently ask me about our mobiles and assessing space and so really it is a long-term project to ensure that we're providing again the most up-to-date facilities for our students and i really look forward to community feedback it's definitely on the docket to ensure that we receive feedback from our community and our students on what they want in their learning environment as well because you have a lot of buildings like i always think about that like you have a <laughs> You're spread out all throughout the EP. We yeah. always talk about this, too, on the show, and I know I, we probably brought it up 
uh, you and I, when we're talking on the show, the idea that you have these four quadrants and they're almost like they're all mini neighborhoods within Evergreen. They are mini neighborhoods. They have their own personalities, which means every school has its own distinct personality and they all have space. So I find it interesting that you looked around, you're like, we have a lot of space, but are we using it right? And I like that. Are we using it right and are we using it properly to support kids? And that's the most important thing that we need to ask ourselves. And it's definitely long-term planning as well. And we want to make sure we're projecting out into the future and making sure that we have plans aligned to our budget and that we're making sound financial decisions. Well, you didn't have to hire any principals this year, right? So that's why you were able to get the architect? I didn't. It was like the most (laughs) beautiful thing. I didn't have to hire any principals. I have all five of my principals returning next year, and I'm thrilled to have that in place. It's good for consistency, I would think. It's absolutely. It's great for consistency. So I remember your new principal over at Central. Yes, Dr. Z. Yes, came and sat down here. We had a nice conversation. And I know that that's one of the schools that, like, at the time, I don't know if I've seen it as much now, but at the time, there was a lot of stuff you'd see in Facebook pages and people making comments about the school. And they were, they, it, it almost seemed like it was, I don't want to call it biggest problem, but I want to say it was probably the thing that was at the top of your list. Like, we have to change a little bit of the culture at the school and we have to do our best job there. So how did the first year go with Dr. Z? Dr. Z did an absolutely wonderful job connecting with our community. And and I'm super proud of the work that he has in store. And most recently, we just finished a school improvement planning process with some of our teachers to really ensure that we're working on student social and emotional needs, especially at a middle school level. Um, We're also working on adopting some new ELA curriculums for our students, which is absolutely essential. And then we are moving forward with some very targeted professional development for our staff as well. How often do you get to interact with uh, like the parents and stuff like that? Because you have individual principals and you have so many different yeah. schools. Do you rely on the principals to kind of come to you and say like, this is something that we're working on or this is what we need? Or is it something where you, you still from time to time are at something and somebody comes up to you and it's like direct parent to the superintendent type stuff? Well, I would like to say that I'm really accessible. I think that's something that's really important to me, that if parents have feedback, that I want to be able to sit down with them and really share their story and their perspective, because that's how I believe we learn and get better. And most recently, about a year ago, we did conduct our strategic plan, and we have had ongoing like committees that have really funneled through that work, which is important. Um, Obviously, the principals interact the most with parents, and I definitely have ongoing meetings with them and then my district office staff as well. So I want to say that last year, one of the things we were talking about just kind of hit me as we're talking. I get a little deja vu because you come down. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember what we were talking about. (laughs) So last year, one of the things we were talking about is that there was that a lot of kids were kind of behind that because of the the stuff I don't want to talk about ever again on this podcast, but exactly. during, during that era when, you know, schools weren't open and there and, and the masking was happening, all these things that were happening, right? Right. And it, it we see all these studies socially behind, you know, in terms of like, you know, just their grades or their, their education level, a little bit behind there. There was all these different areas they were lagging. And I know that was something that was a focus for you. A year, another year removed. Are you seeing a turnaround? Because I have teenagers. I've gotten to see it at three different levels, okay? And I I see a turnaround. I see a bigger turnaround now than I would have imagined I would have had a year ago when it felt like everybody was still reeling from it. Absolutely. And I think it comes down to, you know, everything we do in a school system is about a process and making sure that we get feedback from stakeholders. And we really relied on our teachers to establish what they were seeing with our students. And we did actually increase some staff to make sure that students were getting the needs met that they were demonstrating that includes adding um, a behavior specialist to support with social and emotional learning and some additional district case managers under our student support services department, which we found to be essential at this time just to ensure that we're heading down the right track to support student needs. You've been doing this now for a couple of years. I'm going into year three. I love my job. I have to say that much. That's what I want to ask you right there. Because I mean, like, I'm asking you a question. You're like, all right, everybody's listening to this. So I got to make sure I give the clear, concise answer Uh because I'm going to get, I'm going to get judged. I mean, think about it. You're you're a superintendent of a school district that covers this entire town. And this, this podcast, it's about 3,500 households out of 7,000 a month. So I mean, like, so like you're, you're sitting there going, well, I better answer this because if I say something (laughs) a little bit different than what I really mean, somebody's going to call me on it because that's 
the kind of job you have. You have a public job with a lot of people that yeah. there's going to be people that are thinking you're doing a good job and there's always going to be somebody that's sure. got an opinion and that's going to happen. So I get that. But that's what I kind of wanted to get to is like, are you, are you comfortable, relaxed, having a good time doing it? Yes. I, I have to say I am so fortunate. Evergreen Park is probably the best fit for me. It is just such a great community. And we have actually have a theme. It's called EP Family in the district. And that's what I love about it the most. It's just such a family feel. And when I walk into work, I feel just as supported as the support I try to give to my employees in return. And everyone has just been so welcoming to me, and I cannot be more thankful. And you got to high school here, and it seems like you guys work really close with each other in terms of that transition when they finally move into the other district. Yes, we do. And we actually increased some opportunities for Project Tree, in which our eighth grade students who qualify for Project Tree actually go over to the high school for mathematics which was not previously in place as well. I think any time that you get a younger kid and he gets to, he or she gets to go into the high school exactly. and start to feel like what it's going to be like, that's a positive experience. Yeah, it's exposure you know? for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, because trust me, I, when you walk in there, I think all of us remember it. All adults know it. Yeah. You walk in, you're like, wow, there are people here that look like adults because they're 18 and they're huge and I'm still like a kid. You know, that's, that's always, so I think that when you're able to build that bridge, that's great. Yes, it's wonderful. Awesome, awesome. Well, Dr. Jenna Woodland, Again, when is uh, when is the big fest, the back to school bash? It is August 24th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. We look to have everyone out and everyone is welcome. All right. I'll be there. I'm looking forward to it. I might even jump into the phone this year. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> you have fun with that. <laughs> Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are the things that Country Financial stands for. They're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through Evergreen Park. They're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of your community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. And since Country is already your neighbor, they want to get together and chat. Call your local Country Financial representative, Mike Thauer, today at 708 425 1559 to talk about the things that are important to you and how he can help you protect them. Hey, where's Hannah? She is not here. Why not? Sitting down here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar with Bill and Mike from Southside Pod. Crossover episode. It is. Just just a segment. Just a segment. The multiverse. Just a segment with you guys. Multiverse. Because for months I've been planning the unveiling of the seated bracket for the Battle of Evergreen. I know. We've been listening. And Hannah didn't show this week because she's got a new boyfriend and a kid that the boyfriend has. And they they, they do all kinds of like outings together and she disappeared. I mean, don't worry. When when he leaves her, she'll be back. She'll be back. She'll be back. What, Anybody we're listen, here, though. Listen, this podcast has been around for five years. We've seen Hannah leave and come back and leave and come back. She'll be back next week. We have wives, so we know yeah. how things are. You so know how that's why works. we're here. Yeah. Right. So Bill and Mike do Southside Pod. Subscribe to that. It goes all over the South Side. It's the EP podcast in a little way because it features restaurants and bars and breweries and things going around, but it's outside of Evergreen, around the South Suburbs, in the uh, near Evergreen Park, South Side part of the city of Chicago. EP adjacent. Yes. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I will tell you this. The EP podcast, according to our research, is about 80% female listeners. Oh, Southside Pod is like 50-50. In that case, what's up? <laughs> Hello, ladies. Evening, ladies. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm married. All right. But what's up? All right. So <laughs> it is now time for the Battle of Evergreen Park's bracketed seeds to be unveiled. Yes. Next week. Yeah. Woo! Next week, the voting will begin. Okay. And we will, we're going to blow through this in a couple of weeks. Tonight, we're going to get sowing the seeds. That's all we are. Sowing the seeds. Of love is what we're doing here. All right, let's do okay? it. Like Tears for Fears once said. Now, the reason these guys are here and why it's perfect for them to be helping me out in this segment, we did a battle of the South Side on South Side Pod with neighborhoods and villages in, in the suburbs and everything like that we going did, head to head. It got a little heated. And it got yeah. heated. And we didn't plan it for months either. It was like four minutes on a napkin for Bill. Yeah, yeah. but it but it worked. And yeah. Joliet was in there, which was yeah. ridiculous. And you missed out on several places. Like Crestwood didn't make it, but Joliet did. But the did. important thing is that you learned from my mistakes, and oh. now the EP pod is doing it better. No, but here's what's funny: my social media We're manager, <laughs> my social media manager Faith, who went to Evergreen Park Community High School, oh. okay, now is older, runs an entire business doing social media all around the country for people. Yeah. 
She told me that the biggest things that happened on social media, the way that we trended on Southside Pie was when we aggravated people. Yes. <laughs> when we Every time Bill opens his mouth. When we put people in that shouldn't have been in the tournament. Yeah. And when we snubbed people. Yeah. I, and when I people that. were eliminated way too early. And so the grid has been set up to aggravate people a little bit. Okay. Sounds like what we do. Although I think I've come up with some really great contest in the first and second round that I expect to have happen. All right. we got? So we're going to unveil these right now. Here we go. What is a battle of, by the way? I don't think you even explained they're this. They're all restaurants, bars, places that you entertain yourself at. All Ice going against shops, one another? Bakeries, yes. So we got a bakery versus a restaurant. And the versus you can the have that. Oh, you wow. can have that at some point. Okay. Some point. I'd love to hear this. All, right, so here all we go. EP. So here we go. We'll start with the, the top of the bracket. The number one seed yes. in the Battle of Evergreen Park is going to be Baracos. That makes Very sense. Very good Solid number pick. one seed, yeah. Evergreen Solid Park pick. is the home of Baracos, which is staple. spread out yep. amongst the rest of the South Side. It is probably the biggest restaurant yeah. in, in Evergreen. And the ends are everywhere, and, you know. You can go and drink at 7 in the morning. Yes, I used to do that when nurses. I worked midnights. I used to work midnights. <laughs> I used to work midnights, and I would be in there drinking with nurses. Yes. I would drop my kids off and go drink with the well, nurses. Nice. That's what I would do. Okay. And firemen for the 80% of listeners. Oh, that yeah, I was totally talking to the firemen in there. <laughs> the number one seed will go up against the 16 seed. Oh, no. And the 16 seed will be determined by a play-in game. Play-in. Oh. Oh, what do we got? Rainbow Cone, which is not an evergreen. It's right on the border. Okay. Versus our snub. All this week, people have been voting to try to figure out which place was snubbed because we'd already said yeah. who was in it. We had left one out. Okay. With 63% of the vote beating out the rest of the competitors in our snub poll. What do we got? Wolf's Bakery will take on Rainbow Cone. Wonderful Cone. Bakery. Wait, Solid. Wolf's versus uh, Rainbow, Rainbow Cone? Cone? That's yeah. a tough plan. Donuts versus ice cream. That's a tough plan. Right away. In wow. the 16 C, the winner takes on Baracos. Get out of here. Right Man, away. That's a crazy game. We're on fire. We're right out of the gate. What do we got now? You're just going to disappoint me from this point yeah. on. The two seed, Rosangela's Pizza. Very good pizza. I mean, like and, my and favorite place notice in the, world. the bracket, yeah. the one and the two yeah. seed are Makes both the pizza the places. Yeah, 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 yeah. They could heavy literally dinners. meet each other in the finals and everything else could be for nothing. Yes. We'll play the other play-in game, which is the two breweries that are just on the outskirts of Evergreen Park because we don't have a brewery. What? EP Horse, does not have one brewery? We do not. Sounds like an untapped market. I know. How about well, that was good. Podcast I like that. Brewery. That was a play on words. Untapped market. Untapped you market. Yeah, Thanks, uh, we have Open Outcry. Okay. okay. Versus they horse do a thief. lot of EP stuff. Yeah. Versus Horse Thief Hollow. Yeah, I mean, oh, they're, okay. they're right there. They're, that's a battle wait, that's in That's neighbors itself. again. Yeah. They're got, friends, too. So yo, this is gonna You're be going to make a lot of people mad. Oh, no, no. They're going to be mad at me for putting them against each other. Yeah, right you're for a sure. genius, Faith. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so those that's the beginning. Now, no other playing games. The All number right. three seed will take on the number 14 seed. It will be Chai Tung yes. as a three yeah. seed. Wait, please tell me it's versus Wu House. No, not yet. <laughs> Wu's, actually, Wu's House did not make it. What? what? They did not even win the snubs. Wow. All right. Uh, All right. The Golden Griddle. Will Chai be Tung the versus the Golden seat. Griddle. So we got the only bre- matchup. That, Golden Griddle is Chai the Tung only there. breakfast place. Lo mein versus pancakes. There you go. The number four seed, Porter Cullen. Ooh, Very Porter good. Cullen's yes. We'll yep. take on the number 13 seed in Wojo's. Oh, oh Wojo's. you get a good elk burger over there. Yeah. Oh, really good elk burger. Bison. But now here's the fun thing. The four right and the, the, five, from the, each four other and the five seeds in a bracket of 16, if they both win, face each other. Oh, yeah. The four seed is Porter Cullen's. The five seed is Tavern in the Green. Ooh. Oh. Tavern in the Green will go up against another place owned by the same owners. Come on. The number 12 seed, Pappies, will take on Tavern no. in the Green. How, how is it? Well, I mean, he's got a, a horse in the same race here? What's yeah. going on here? He's got two restaurants. The Pappises will have two in the Battle of wow. Evergreen Park. The five seed will be Tavern in the Green, and the 12 seed will be Pappies. Which, now, which child do you root for? I want you to think about this. If Porter Cullens and Tavern in the Green, the two higher seeds win, you'll get Porter Cullens versus Tavern in the Green in the second round. Yeah. If the two lower seeds upset, you could have Wojo's versus Pappies. Whoa, yeah. Which are wow. very similar as well. Absolutely. Yes. Wow. I put a lot of thought into this thing. I All see right, that, here we go. Chris. Almost too much. The sixth seed, oh, probably too much. The sixth seed in the Battle of Number Evergreen six. Park will be TT's. TT, which is the Vietnamese restaurant with the martini T-H-I-T-H-I. bar. Oh, yeah. Yes, 
Okay, everybody calls it Thethys, but her nope. actual yep. name is TT. Yeah, she's told yeah. me that before. Vietnamese fusion. She will be taking on the number eleven seed, which is Cravings, another ice cream shop. Yes, oh. formerly Baskin Robbins, I believe. Yep. Yes, same owners. They just left Baskin Robbins. Yeah. Started oh, sometimes owners. you gotta okay. leave the you know, on the show before. Start all over with them. All right. All right. Now here's another note. If TTs yes. and Chai Tung advance, oh no, they will face each other in the next wow. round. Wow. Yeah, I plan this out, baby. Wow. <laughs> So like, here I think we, we know who's going to win those two first like, round yeah. matches. Just here a, we go. Just an Asian battle of it would be, that's exactly deliciousness. What it would be. That's what it would be. Okay, <laughs> the next seed, the number seven seed, is the American Legion Bar. Okay. Which will face Spoken Vine, a 10 seed. Ooh, they are the only two Spoken that Vine. are current advertisers on the EP podcast. We placed them against Come each on, other. Come on, you can't do that. No, we put them against each stupid? other. Are you stupid? We, we were like, yeah, you know what? Lose one who wants them. to pay more I, next I month? I am going to lose one of them. Yes. One wow. of them will lose. One is brand new, which is Spoken Vine. You're committed to the open. bet here. American Legion is the other one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it'll, it'll be an one interesting One has an match. eternal flame. And one now here's it. one that I think. Like the Bengals. Here's one that I think will be the most interesting, and this is the last one, the 8-9 matchup. Mm. It was always a, always a good 8-9 matchup. Joliet versus. <laughs> it it <laughs> kind of feels like it could be Joliet oh, versus. No, here we, we go. Hearts Saloon. Oh, oh yes. Okay. Old school. Versus Durbin's of Evergreen oh. Park. Oh. Wow, <laughs> man! Which one smells they're like the eight P nine? I, they're the eight nines going against wow. each other. Think about that. There's gonna be some angry people who ever Durbin's loses gotta that win. win. I don't know. Hearts. Man, is... Hearts has been around forever. That's, Durbin, I mean, like Durbin used to be like that cigarette shop or something, right? When you listen to who's involved, because you guys are hearing this for the first time, who stuck out to you right away? Like this one's going deep and could win. Was there one that just kind of jumped out at you? And I feel was like they're very gonna surprised win? that I. I mean, did I misseed something? I think that the fact that you put Rainbow Cone in there, and they're not from EP, Rainbow Cone is huge. Yeah, but could Rainbow Cone get by Baracos? I don't know. It depends on who's voting, right? Depends on your age group of voting. You do we have like some non-drinkers? Do we have? I mean, so generally the EP podcast brings in women from twenty-five to fifty-four. That's probably a the the largest amount. That's like Baracos, like. I think Garacos right wins because of that. Yeah. I would think in the voting. That's okay. what happens. Now, I mean, there's a whole week for these these groups to start talking a little bit of crap, start saying we should win, yep. start sticking up for you know themselves, yes. and start like saying, like, hey, get ready when the voting starts next week. Okay. Do but do do Bill and I get to vote now too? Everybody gets to vote. The everybody voting will be on to, can everybody, everybody as, can as vote. The voting will be on what? It, well, yes. Well, it depends. How, do, how many Chris, social how do, media accounts can you okay, make? Okay. How do we vote? So there'll be an Instagram vote. So okay. if you have an Instagram account, you can yeah. do that. There'll be a Twitter vote. So if you have a Twitter uh, account, you can vote there. And there'll be a like Facebook vote that will be a uh an online survey link where you have to give a valid email oh. address. Okay. And then can you I get just use your email address? That's what I generally do. Don't do that. Do you want to make a prediction as a host and who's going to take this whole thing? You want me to think? I'm just asking. You don't have to. Okay, here's what I, I mean, think. Bill and is I want happen. to make predictions. I think the two pizza places take each other on in the end. I really believe in the can one that and the two happen? seed. That can I happen, made right? them the one and the two that seed. That can happen? Yeah, I made them the one and the two seed because I thought they were the two strongest things. And you know what's interesting about this? Rosangela's taking on the two breweries. Both brewery owners like to go to Rosangela's. And the folks I mean, at Los Angeles likes have Los commented Angeles. that they like the two people breweries. Love pizza. These people all like each other I in like that group, in that in that in that two and fifteen thing. They all get along with each other, so it'll be interesting to see who ends up coming out of that group. Interesting to see who okay. stabs the other Here, in the back. Here's the thing that I'm wondering: Will a non Evergreen Park entity? That's what I'm afraid of. Make it to the Elite Eight. That's Can Rainbow Cone get by? Can one of the breweries get by? Rainbow Cone's like famous. Eight? You know, they're like beyond EP famous. Open Outcry does so many things for Evergreen Park. They're always at Evergreen Park uh, fests and, yeah. and organizations, things like that. So they have a presence in, or, in Evergreen Park. Both of them. So I think that they horse, have a good chance. And horse both, Thief does too. Both yeah. Horse Thief and Open Outcry are now on tap in a lot of Evergreen yep. Park places, and they their beers are on shelves in Binnie's. And like, the so like these are prominent breweries, but the thing is they got to go head to head. I wasn't going to leave them out. What, what if both of them advanced to the, to the elite? Yeah, right. That's what I was like. They have to go against each other. And then if they win, they got to beat Los Angeles and Los Angeles, like they do these pizza contests. If Los Angeles doesn't win, it's in the final four every year. So that would be a tough beat True. is the way I see it. Here's the thing I worry about the 14 seed golden griddle. Golden griddle. It's the only breakfast place. Chai Tung's got them all day. Watch yeah. them push through. No. They're my upset special. I'm going to make a bold statement right here. What? 
Chai Tung to the end. No oh, way. Chai, chai Tung to win. Chai Tung to the end. I'm going to take Chai Tung to win. <laughs> wow. Mike, who do you got? Place it down. Who do you got to the end? I mean, I'm selfishly going to pick my favorite pizza place in the world and go with Los Angeles. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I so. have both pizza places at the end. I'm not going to pick something. Well, which one you can't it. pick? Oh, yeah. I will tell you the thing that I'm most interested in is Porter Cullen's versus Wojo's, Pappy's versus Tavern in the Green. That's going to be a good one. if we get... Similar places in the next round going against each other just to get to the final four. That's a bloodbath right there. And, and, and that'll be interesting to watch as well. Anyway, the Battle of Evergreen Park will be up and voting will begin next week. One week from today, there'll be a new episode of the EP podcast. We'll hype it up a little bit more. We're going to try to interview some of the people that are going to be in it. And then we are going to launch this thing and we're going to vote through August. It'll be done before the month is over. And we're going to see who is the, who's the king or the queen or the champion, whatever you want to call them of Evergreen Park in the battle of Evergreen Park. now time for your EP podcast word on the street brought to you by spoke and vine the brand new wine bar and bottle shop northeast corner of 95th and Kedzie 21 and over and they are firm on that incredible menu the food is really good and a wide selection of wines taste them or get a big old glass sit back and have some fun with your friends see more at spokeandvinewines.com the Evergreen Park Senior Citizens Council and the Office of Citizen Services presents Memories to Go the Village Wide Garage Sale Rain or Shine on Saturday, September the 9th, 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Why am I mentioning it now? Because it's time to get in there. The day this episode comes out is the deadline day for early sign up and repeat customers to get a discount. It's going to be out at Yukich Field. You can reserve a 10 by 10 spot inside the ice rink or outside. Bring out your wares and sell them to the village. Get over to the village website for more information. The Evergreen Park Rec Department has extended the Fall Soccer League registration date to August the 5th. It is open to players ages 4 to 14. There are also indoor cycling classes starting on the 14th of August and yoga classes starting this month. Meanwhile, the youth department is having a grandparents and grandkids day in the youth garden on August 22nd. Garden for fun, have a craft, a snack, and story time. Any questions, 708-229-3377. This Friday, August the 4th at 6 p.m. at James J. Sexton Park, formerly known as 50 Acre Park, 91st and Rockwell, a free summer concert with the Smiley Tillman Band. And that brings us our final guest of the episode, brought to you by SidSauce.net, the peppers grown here on the south side, bottled, developed right here in Evergreen Park, and delivered to your door, the only place I get my hot sauce from. See everything they have to offer at SidSauce.net. EP Podcast joined on the line right now by Tom Rosetko. He is one of the founding members of the Smiley Tillman Band, which is going to be performing at 50 Acre Park right here in the EP. Tom, how are you? I'm doing great, Chris. How about yourself? I'm doing good. I I appreciate you calling in. Now, you've been with this band, and you you co-founded it for over a decade. First of all, how did this come about? How did you get involved with Smiley? And and how does he keep going at this age and playing all these shows? Because I looked on your website, you you guys are busy. Yeah, we do keep rather busy. Um, He's able to do it just for his pure love of it, and it's really what's keeping him going. You know, when you get to an older age sometimes, um, you want to kind of try to avoid, you know, just, you know, just sitting around, you know, just what happens to a lot of older people. They end up just sitting around, and a lot of times they end up just going, either sitting around or going to the doctor. Um, Smiley loves to play. Our band, the Smiley Tillman Band, does, does over 100 shows a year. So it's 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 quite a quite a bit of playing, but the nice thing is we've had some success 
So, and we've been at it for a long time. So when we get nicer things, uh, nicer opportunities, such as uh, the job at uh, 50 Acre Park in Evergreen, um, by all means, that's why we, we do this and that's why we put the effort in. What do people expect when they come out there? I'm, I'm assuming they can bring the kids. This is going to be fun. Absolutely. Uh, it's a, definitely a family-friendly show. One thing about Smiley is not only does he play, but he's he's very funny, too. He um, He's very, very engaging with the crowd. He... Um, He's, he br- he brings um, a, a performance like ours kind of back to an older time where the uh, the front man you know was actually a front man and he was you know engaging with the, the crowd you know telling some jokes just you know um, setting up the music a little bit more and there's also he uh, he does reference quite a bit of history of uh, Chicago blues um, as through that 60 years he was playing he played with quite a few uh, luminaries in uh, in the Chicago area. Um, he used to play with Buddy Guy, uh, Junior Wells, and um, he, um, Smiley also has a, a somewhat of a, a jazz background too. While we're primarily a blues band, we do throw uh, you know some elements of jazz into the uh, performance, as well as uh, some soul and um, music in the in the vein of uh, Motown and Stax. So um, it, it, it's a nice show. It really does have something for everybody. Um, our crowd is. Is, is pretty unique as we attract a lot of young people, but we attract a lot of middle-aged people also. And they, and they absolutely love it. Sounds like a great show. Smiley Tillman Band this Friday, 6 p.m. at James J. Sexton Park, 91st and Rockwell. Start pouring over your Battle of Evergreen Park brackets. Who's going to win? Voting starts in a week with the opening rounds. Don't miss a thing. Make sure you are subscribed to this show. Anywhere podcasts can be found and always at the eppodcast.com. It's the EP Podcast. All things Evergreen Park. It's the EP Podcast. Evergreen Park. <laughs>